Hello everyone and welcome to another Wolf Electronic ISOS webinar. My name is Markus Eberle and I will moderate this webinar today. We are very pleased that you took the time to participate in our webinar. The topic of today's webinar is Wireless Power Transfer Enables IIoT. We cut the cord. Our speaker today is Jem Som, who is working as Division Manager in the field of Wireless Power Transfer at Wolf Electronic. He will hold today's webinar and also answer your questions. Before we start the webinar, I would like to point out one thing. You will be muted during the webinar today. This means that you cannot ask us questions via microphone during the webinar. Nevertheless, you have the opportunity to ask us questions during the webinar at any time via the chat function. You will find the chat function in the webinar control panel. Today's webinar will be about 30 minutes long. The chat questions will then be answered in a question answer session following the webinar. There are 10 to 15 minutes in addition scheduled for this. If we are unable to answer all your questions within this time, we will answer them via email after the webinar. And if you have still any other question left after the webinar, just email us at isis-webinar at we-online.com. We will try to answer all your questions promptly. At the end of the webinar, you will be also asked to participate in, in a feedback survey. We would be pleased if you take the time to fill out the survey and help us to improve our webinars. You will also receive the link to the presentation as well as to the recording of today's webinar only in the next few weeks. And now I will hand over to our speaker, Cem, and I wish you an exciting webinar. My name is Cem Som, and I'm happy to present you today the topic Wireless Power Transfer Enables IIoT. This presentation was a cooperation with our wireless power team and the wireless connectivity and sensors team. So also here, thanks a lot to everybody to realize that. Today's session, um, I would like to show you some topics upfront, but first of all, I will give you a nice picture of a drone. This is from the company Quantum Systems nearby Munich. This company is producing uh, drones as you have you can see in the picture here. Now, what have this drone to do with our topic today? I would like to show you today very nice proof of, proof of concept possibilities and for sure in which way this could be enabled in your application. First of all, how this works. As you have seen before, the drone is possible to land on a specific point and without any connectors, we have to cut the cord. So that means we have a possibility to charge the battery of the drone. In this case, we are working in a wireless power transfer system and the wireless power transfer system is in principle a transformer, which you can see here on the side. And we are cutting the transformer in two pieces. On one side, we have the primary side and the second side, the secondary. The secondary side will be our receiver and the primary will be our transmitter coil. And we have a bigger distance we have to overcome and this will be filled in, so will be a magnetic field to transfer the energy. In principle, this is all what we need. How this works. On the right hand side, we can see a resonant solution. Here we are talking about antennas as this system is working in a higher megahertz range. At the transmitter side, the transmitter antenna is creating a magnetic field and we have the possibility to place more receiver coils. These receiver coils are in this field and they're catching up the magnetic field, a part of it, not all of it. So that means here is the efficiency lower, but the X, Y and Z misalignment is bigger. <clears throat> On the left-hand side, we have an inductive coupled system. We have a transmitter coil and the receiver coil. These are coupled to each other, very close. So that means the magnetic field is penetrating to the receiver coil and just a little bit of the magnetic field will be not inside of the receiver coil. That means the coupling is better, the efficiency better. But on the other hand, we will not have 
the big distances as we have on the resonance side. So that means here we're on the range of maybe 5, 10, 20 millimeters. Depends on your system. Now we have a range, let's say the basics, what we are talking about today and how we can realize that and how you can implement it in your application, in your product. Yeah, today I would like, first of all, to show you some possible applications, just that you have in mind, okay, what's possible and in which range of pro uh, products we are talking about and which power range also. The basic of this is our 200 watt development kit. This you can use as a starting point. I will also show you some added values, which will help you to get very fast in this technology. An LCD board, which is an add-on to the 200 watt kit, will help you to enable IIoT. The IIoT, how this will be done in the, with the help of the wireless connectivity and sensors, we are able to create data and to show you them in the cloud. Additionally, I will show you a proof of concept, which I think everybody of us, uh, a lot of people are working from home. Also, I did a, a home office, small project, and I would like to show you and share you my pictures. And in the end of the day, also Markus mentioned, um, you're welcome and our support is there for you. Important is that we would like to give you a, a, the possibility to implement wireless power technology in your application. Now, some examples uh, of applications which are possible up to 200 watts all over there, or more than 200 watts. So I think um, very common, and everybody knows, the, the lawnmowers. The lawnmowers, which are used in your garden or in the backyard, um, today they are driving very, let's say, autonomously, and they are driving back to a charging station. Now, what's the issue? The issue is it could be the problem that the contacts which are in the um, wet, dirty, or um, very not dry environment could happen that the contacts to charging the battery will be not very well. This will be a possibility to use wireless power. Otherwise, if you have sensors inside of the lawnmower, all this information can be transferred directly to the station and from the station, maybe to your mobile handheld. The same thing you can do with drones, as we have seen also in the first picture. This is a smaller one. Additionally, the power tools or and a consumer electronics can use this checking, for example, for the power tools during the charging, the battery temperature um, will be a very added value that gives you a figure out when is a new battery for the power tools are needed and you have to re-buy them or recharge them. Also here you have some robots which are used at the agriculture to measuring the moisture, temperature, the pressure and all this stuff. And all this information can be sent over to the PC or to the handhelds. If you're looking now into the inner cities as uh, smart cities, we have also e-bikes and e-scooters. And here we have also the, um, the big, big issue is all these um, scooters, for example, have to collect it in the evening, be, must be charged and then will be spread it around the city again. If we have charging stations like we have here for the uh, for the bicycles, but without a connector, just by placing them on a specific point, you can charge them. Or let's say the end user, the customer can place it there. They will get any benefits. And additionally, the charging station knows which of the devices, how the battery looks like, and when maybe the device must be uh, reordered or changed. If we now look into bigger um, power classes, if you have caddies or if you have wheelchairs or forklifts, lifts. Also here we can use wireless power technology, which are have the same added values and the same benefits as we have it for the smaller devices. As a proof of concept, as I mentioned before, um, I was in contact with the uh, company Quantum Systems and they are very keen and they give me the possibility to get one of these drones as seen in the first picture. 
If we now look into the details of the drone itself, you can see that the drone itself will be just um, placed together. And we have in, the, in this area a so-called payload. This payload is <clears throat> in this white box here. It can be removed, it looks like that. And in this payload, the drone can take a camera, a, a laser, a leader, or other kind of different sensors. I'm using this payload now to integrate the wireless power technology. Important point maybe also to add on is this gray front is the whole battery of the drone. Now, how this looks like at my home, I build up the drone and I include in the payload the wireless power technology. That means our receiver board with the coil and I'm using the transmitter to charge it. From the front view, as you can see here, we have a distance of just a few millimeters distance to overcome the, um, the air gap. Inside of the box looks like here that we have our receiver board. This is an additional board, the battery management board and the coil. A closer look, that means here I just place a foam in the middle of that to press it down and to the outer surface of the housing. On top, we, um, we have a battery management board from with the IC from Texas Instruments, and for sure we are using our own passive components. The two cables, which you have seen here, will be then connected to the battery to do the charging. So what is the basic, so what we need? We need for, first of all, the 200 watt kit. This 200 watt kit have some kind of added values and benefits. First of all, the current profile is almost sinusoidal. We can change the resonance frequency and then we're changing also the output voltage and this can be regulated. This system itself is completely scalable. So that means um, this system is now working up to 200 watt, but the concept itself, you can use it for one, two, three kilowatts as well, but then you have to change for sure some kind of devices on the boards like for example, the MOSFETs to GAN or bigger uh, capacitors or inductors for the higher currents. The MOSFET itself in the system are switching at the zero cross point. That means we will have uh, very low losses and the efficiency is over 90%, which we measured already. It's scalable, yeah, as mentioned, um, we can change also the voltages and currents. Um, today it's a 20 volt input, 10 amps, and but it's also possible to go to 36 volt or 48 volt as a possible way to do. Additionally, we included a bi-directional data transfer um, from transmitter to the receiver side and receiver to the transmitter side, which we'll follow up later on the slides. The system itself comes within the box and you will have the transmitter, receiver boards, a power supply and the wireless power coils. The boards itself, we have a full bridge on the transmitter side and an active rectifier on the receiver side. And for sure, the resonance tank is needed. All these detailed information you will find on our app, app note, ANP 070. This for sure uh, is for free. You can download them. If you would like to adapt the software, for example, you would like to change the data, you would like to adapt a different kind of uh, switching uh, LEDs on or off, you have to download the software. This is possible on our website. Maybe important to info uh, is that the software, which is already programmed to the system, is still working. It's, you just have to plug it in and it will work. Important, please don't forget to connect the load and keep a specific distance of minimum two millimeters between the two coils, otherwise the system can be destroyed because of the high voltage spikes. But if you would like to change the software by yourself, as it is a development environment, you can go to our website at ANP 070, scroll down to the page, and then you will have this application node, GABA file schematic layout and firmware. Just click on it, you have to do a Fill in the request. You will get an email, which you have to click on the request. 
then you will be forwarded again to our website and you can download the zip file. In this zip file, everything is included. Let's say all the uh, C files, the project, and you can do a change by yourself. If you then download the software, open it, um, you can change everything what you want. For example, as you can see here in the screen, the software name is called Dave. Uh, you can download this from the Infineon website. And you need for sure a debugger, looks like that, which you have to buy by yourself for any kind of distributor. This debugger, um, you connect by USB to your laptop and connect the cable to the debug interface on the transmitter or receiver side, and then you can download your files. As mentioned, what happens if I need more power, if I need additional support, maybe if I have different application, for example, like an e-bike. The most of the e-bikes today, they have 36 volt or 48 volts. Our system is for 20 volts, but no problem. We will have a bomb change for 48 volt applications available. Just get in touch with us and we will give you an adapted bomb, which will give you an idea which parts which we have to change that you can able to change for 48 volts input and output voltage. This is not a big issue. Additionally, all these GABA schematic files which you will get are in PDF. If you would like to have the Altium files which are also available, you will get them on request. If you would like to go now for further maybe not 200 watts, maybe 400 watts, we have a bigger coil. So here we have a coil with a 70 millimeter, 70 millimeter outer diameter coil. The inductance value is the same as we have it on our 200 watt kit. So you don't have to change the resonance tank. You just adapt this coil to the system. Maybe you can increase the, the voltage, keep the current the same, but then you can transfer higher power. Now we would like to show the data on the transmitter side. As I mentioned before, you have a, um, a lawnmower a power tool and you have a charging station and you place uh, the robot or any kind of other drones on the charging station. And now I would like to see the data or let's say what kind of things are transferred from transmitter to receiver and vice versa. For this, we have developed an add-on board of the LCD board, which is in end-to-end um, -end IoT system implementation. This is an add-on board, plus a sensor, for example. The bidirectional data transfer is included to the software. What we have, as I mentioned, the 200 watt kit as a basis, we have the receiver board, our coils, the transmitter board, and we are connecting the LCD board. These coils are normally not in that range. Uh, we just placed this for the picture. For sure, the coil must be upside down. On the right-hand side, you can see the sensor, WSEN pad board is the temperature evaluation board. And for sure, don't forget to connect the load. On the left-hand side, you will find the new LCD board. This LCD board for sure uh, we have a new website, just click on it and all information you'll find here. And I will also give you a little bit inside views. The LCD board, as an example, can show you the input, output voltages, the, the current, the working frequency, efficiency, and for sure, the sensor data. At the board itself, um, we have not so many things uh, to show. Um, there is an XMC controller from Infineon, which is handling the, uh, the software control. Here on top, we will place the LCD display itself. Um, we have a debug connector to program the XMC controller, and we have a connector which goes to the transmitter board to get the serial data. For sure, most of the parts are used from WE. It's programmable, the same thing like we have uh, the transmitter receiver side. You can change anything on the display what you would like to do. Uh, all informations like the manuals, the bomb, the GABA file schematic layout, also the software for the transmitter, receiver, and LCD board are free for download. Important, if you would like to use this additional 
add on board, you have to reprogram the transmitter, the receiver board. The LCD board is pre-programmed and 100% tested in-house. As mentioned, the applications are environmental control, industrial IoT. If you want to order this, just go on on our WE online catalog and you will order this very easy. Now, how to program the transmitter receiver board if I would like to uh, use this add on board, if I have already bought a board, uh, development board. Again, you have to go to our website. As I mentioned, wireless power LCD. There is a new firmware for transmitter receiver board. Just click on it and you will be able to download the firmware. Then you have to use again the Infineon debugger, connect it and program transmitter receiver board. There are two different um, projects. One is with sensor and one is without sensor. As the sensor is the I2C connected um, at the receiver side, so that means a two different uh, software are available to show the data on the LCD board. If I'm now connecting the system completely as I mentioned and I have a sensor, uh, for example, then for sure the system looks like I have it here on the desk. And then I can have a look and can uh, send the data from the sensor board over the system to the cloud and I can show it at the dashboard in the web. And now we are going to have a look on our live demonstration. For this, I have here um, in my home office the system I built it up. I just restart it now that um, it will work. In this case, uh, we are able to do that. In this, I would like to show here my with my camera. In this case, you will see um, here the temperature sensor, which I can place with my finger to increase the temperature. This is the receiver board. As you can see, it's connected by I2C bus. My load, the two coils are the data and energy transfer. Here we have the transmitter board, the serial connection to the LCD board, the serial connection to our wireless node, which sending the data uh, from the wireless node to our Wi-Fi module. It's a proprietary WE protocol. The Wi-Fi module is sending this data again over my um, hotspot from my mobile to the system on my PC. So you can see now here, hopefully my the data which is live. So now we have to restart as the data is not updating on the website. Okay, so then you can see on my screen, these are the datas. And now I will do the change with my finger. And then you can see how in red the temperature is rising, for example. Uh, I can also place the temperature, for example, to the load as the load is creating also heat. And now you can see the temperature is increasing. The pressure for sure is also the same thing. And now I'm go back with my camera. So this is, let's say, the possibility to get the data out of the real system here to the dashboard. So how this works? As mentioned, we have here the sensor, the data which I created, and by I2C bus, we're sending the bus, uh, the data to the receiver port. In-band modulation with ASK, the data will be transferred to the transmitter board. As mentioned, it is bidirectional possible. We can send also data from transmitter side to the receiver side by FSK. 
the serial data which is created or demodulated on the transmitter side will be transferred by UART to the LCD board and you can have a look on the display. Again, it will be one to one forwarded to the wireless node. It's possible to up to 65,000 different nodes if you have it in a, in a factory, for example, and you have uh, several devices uh, which are censoring. The data can be then sent, for example, uh, with, the in, with the company internal Wi-Fi net with the proprietary protocol to the Wi-Fi module. The Wi-Fi module, again, is sending them with the Wi-Fi transfer to the cloud. And the cloud itself, as mentioned, and if you have seen before, at the dashboard, and you can have a look in your smart or mobile devices. We just use here um, a WE IoT device website, which we created by ourselves. Again, what is needed? How to enable, let's say, a dump solution? We have, first of all, the node. This node is a tie on one, is a one by one gateway. This is this year. The second is we need a gateway, uh, which is including again a tie-on and a Calypso. This tie-on will send the data from here to this tie-on and the Calypso is sending it to the Wi-Fi. So this is which we call IIoT enabler. What are the benefits? Oh, additional services, I forgot this. Let's say if you would like to create a dashboard like that, so you don't have to start by zero, we can help you. We have uh, support with Microsoft Azure or Amazon AWS, and for sure uh, you can get a support by GitHub. If there is uh, there is a step by step documentation and code examples, how to realize an example like that. So please go to GitHub.com with electronic featherwings. The featherwings itself, we have now five different built up by our own. So as mentioned, uh, we, uh, we have a tie-on, which is uh, sending the data in the proprietary WE protocol, and the Calypso, which is a standard Wi-Fi module. Additionally, we have a sensor feathering, uh, which is using, for example, acceleration, pressure, temperature, humidity, for example. And we have a power module and a microcontroller module. All these are used for rapid prototyping, you can connect the sensor to the cloud. Um, you will get a smart IoT application. We have a microprocessor to program everything. And for sure, it is like Lego, where you just plug in by yourself. And additionally, a big benefit, Adafruit and SparkFun, there are several hundred boards already in the market, which you can just adapt and increase your uh, functionality in your system. What are the next steps on our hand, on our side? The next steps will be that uh, we have a new app node, which is including the uh, wireless power and NFC antenna impedance matching. In this case, um, the data will be not transferred in band, it will, the data will be transferred out of band. So that means this will increase the data rate, as you have seen before, we have just 500 bits per second, and NFC is 885 kilobit per second. And for this, we need a new part, as you can see in the picture, the wireless power coil in the middle and an NFC coil around as a combination, one part. And in this application node, it is described how to do the filter and matching if you would like to use an NFC functionality. Additionally, for sure, we are working on an add-on NFC board for the 200 watt kit. That means that you can just directly buy an add-on board just connect it to the 200 watt as a basis again, and then you are able to transfer NFC data from transmitter to receiver and from receiver to transmitter side. In the end, more or less, I would like to give you just some hand on, like um, we have a trilogy of wireless power transfer where you can find most of the basics and um, some application examples and just give you an idea what about the wireless power transfer it is. If you need additional help according to the mentioned topics, please go to our website, weonline.de or .com, wireless power, where you can find for sure the application notes and all other manuals and descriptions. Please contact your local ISOS contact. Um, otherwise, just go to our website.
Um, for specifically to the 200 watt kit board, you can write us an email, wirelesspower at veonline.com, subject 200 watt kit, so it's easier to filter it out. Or you have questions to the wireless connectivity and sensor topics, which is the WCS support or the digital dot engineer email address. All mentioned dashboard and also feather wing topics are uh, also free for download at the GitHub homepage. In the end, nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has come. I think today is the time has come to increase, include the wireless power technology in your application. Now I'm open for any questions and thanks a lot for your attention. So thank you, Cem, for your interesting presentation. As you have mentioned, now we would like to turn our attention to your questions. So we wait a little until your questions come in. You can send us your questions with the chat function in the webinar control panel. So Cem, I see the first question. Um, it was some slides before, uh, maybe you know directly what it is about. Um, question is, what about EMC? Would shielding mm -hmm. be better in this case? So about the EMC topics for sure, um, um, you have to do uh, shielding in this case, but as I mentioned, the inductive um, coupled coils, um, the field is focused between the two coils. So that means the ferrite, uh, which you have seen in the picture, and also in my home office, um, you can see that the ferrite itself, the plate is shielding and focusing the magnetic field between the two coils. And important is that these um, magnetic fields are shielded, but in the end, for sure, you have to do um, um, FCC, CE, and RET certification, um, and this is a very important point, yes, for sure. Okay, thank you. And let's go on. Um, are ODB++ files available for the 200 watt dev kit? Uh, needed them for EMC sim simulation? No, these are not available. Um, as we have not this uh, kind of, uh, let's say, we didn't do these simulations, and in this case, we don't have it. Um, we do directly the measurements in our EMI or EMC um, chamber, and we didn't do any simulation. Um, if this is needed on your end, um, please get in touch with us, and we are able to create this data. Okay, thank you, Jim. So let's go on. Cem, how well does the wireless power transfer handle dynamic loads? What is the loop bandwidth to handle mm -hmm. load steps? So the um, automatic uh, mode, as I mentioned, between the transmitter and receiver side uh, is that if the load is changing, uh, we have uh, today as in a rec working frequency between 120 and 150 kilohertz. That means more or less every second we are able to change the frequency. By changing the frequency, we are changing the load changes. So increasing the frequency, decreasing the frequency. Uh, so that means every second roundabout, this feedback loop is changing, checking the load as we are measuring the output voltage. So we would like to stay with a, let's say for example, 20 volt output voltage. And then the loop is, let's say, um, working and, um, yeah. It's around about one second feedback. Okay. So next question, I think I can answer that too. Great talk. How do we get access to the recording? You will receive the link to the presentation as well as to the recording of today's webinar in the next few days. So you will get the link sent from us. Then Jem, next question. Um, where is the data stored? So I don't know which data you mean. <laughs> I think and now the data which is sent over to the cloud, I think so. So I think this is if this is the question, the data is stored at that server which you have chosen. 
So in this case, we have chosen the, the Microsoft or Amazon cloud. Um, so the data will be stored there, or you can also use your own environment in your company to be more secure. So this is completely free. You just have to, to get an example and you can send it over to any kind of location where you want to do it. Okay, Cem, then it seems that there are no any further questions here. So thank you very much for your, uh, yeah, for your webinar and also your great presentation. I'm really excited by this solution. So if there are any questions um, left after the webinar, just email us at isis-webinar at we-online.com or send it directly as you see the email from Gemsom. So I hope you will hear us at our next webinar and I wish you a good day. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.